strut replacement, 2005 Kia Amante, and here is some information that came with the quick struts that come with the springs complete ready to install. One thing you need to know is that the removal of the front struts and the rear struts does not affect the front end or rear end alignment at all. Front struts, because they don't turn, do not have a bearing plate like many struts do. After you have removed the engine plastic shroud, remove the three nuts from the top of the strut and the reinforcement plate and the rubber cover that goes over the strut. I left one nut on slightly closest to the edge of the fender to support the strut. This bolt is a clinch bolt and what it does it tightens around the bottom of the strut and holds it in place. There is a gap of course where the yellow arrow is. Also remove the two bolts and brackets that hold the brake hose. You may need to insert a chisel shown here with a wrench into the little slot where the clinch bolt is to spread that slightly. I'll call this part the wishbone and there is a bolt that goes through and remove that bolt. That bolt shown here. The strut will come loose from the wishbone as you see here. I could not remove the strut without forcing the lower control arm up and of course that raises the upper A-frame and then you can get the strut out. I used a jack post underneath the lower control arm and slightly lowered my lift to put pressure on it. This guide protection goes down into the slot where the clinch bolt is. The end of the strut should be completely down into and flush with the wishbone. You may need a long punch, as I did, to line up the bolt for the wishbone. Another photo showing the end of the strut flush with the wishbone. The quick strut, as Monroe calls it, comes complete and ready to install with new nuts. I save old hardware. I'll save these springs, throw the strut away. I even cut the shaft off this old strut to save it. I can always use hardware. The spring compressor tool from Amazon, $30 in 2023, worked very well, but I wouldn't want to try to use it on a real heavy spring like a Denali. That tool clean and greased well to make it last. Rear struts have to have the spring removed so it's a little bit more complicated. Remove the bolt from the bottom of the strut shown here. Remove the bolt from the top where you see the socket going through the A-frame. Bolt removed from the upper A-frame. The entire support plate at the top of this strut has to be removed with four bolts. Now the support plate in the strut is completely loose. Take a mallet and tap the bottom end of the strut off the stud where you removed the bolt earlier. Lubricating all these parts with WD-40 before and after makes things go so much better. This is the bolt that goes through the A-frame at the top on the rear. Hold that nut with a little guide plate on it. Hold that with the wrench as you remove the bolt. If you don't, you'll be in that little guide tab. Use a mallet once the strut is completely loose to tap the bottom of the strut off the stud and you can see how it needs to be lubricated with WD-40. And here is the complete rear strut assembly with the mounting plate and the A-frame. This spring compressor tool, 
is little retaining pins that move out to hold the coil as you see here. Make sure that they are extended. This tool works better if it's uh, installed in the opposite direction. The nut on top of the tool also has a provision for half inch drive. And here are the rear struts completely broken down. You can see the spring is tapered. It'll only go one way. Be sure to install the dust boots, the two yellow ones, the two black ones, before you install the strut into the spring. The washer at the far right under the nut goes a certain way. Be sure to put that back right. Lubricate the bushings you see here with WD-40 or silicone grease. I lubricated all rubber bushings front and rear with WD-40 while I had them off because I was having a noise in the right front end. That noise was a loud cracking, popping noise from the right front only when the car was cold, the weather was cold. And I still have a little bit of that, but it's much better. I need to lubricate the bushings more. I took a vacuum cleaner and cleaned up all the area where the strut plate would go. Now I'm not a front end man, but I believe I'm correct in that this is the toe end adjustment. Which won't be changed, by the way. Close up of the toe end adjustment. And I believe this is the caster and camber adjustment. Not sure, because as I said, I'm not a front end man. The spring pads go a certain way, which you'll easily see when you start putting these struts back together on the rear. This is the new Monroe strut. It comes with the nut is all. You see the spring pad in the upper support plate for the rear. Mounting that support plate in my vise makes things go a little easier since I work by myself. The compressor tools must be opposite from each other. Make sure they don't slide around. I used vice grips because one of them tried to slip. I used a vice grip on the spring to keep that from happening. Be sure the pins on the tool that hold the spring in place in the tool, make sure that they're where they should be. This could be dangerous. You have to be very careful. Do this at your own risk. When you have compressed the spring enough, the tip of the strut will stick through the bushing as shown here. Then you can start your nut and washer. As you release the spring tension with the tool, be sure that your upper and lower spring pads are in the proper position because it can change if you twist the spring. Lubricate all the parts, the nuts, the bolts, the stud with WD-40 and reverse to install the complete assembly. I hope this video has been beneficial to you. Good luck and be safe.